Heh, <laughs> Justin Z, you've We're entered here. the arena of the Vosh, huh? Bro, what facts and logic. Do you have to say? I'm What's ready. up, buddy? I'm ready. I'm just saying, like, I think I said this before. Anarchy is pretty much like a joke of an ideology. At this point, I don't think there's many people who legitimately... I mean, you know, you have your Richard Wolfs and people like that. Would you but, like, like to articulate why you think it's a joke, or did you just, like, read that somewhere? Um... I don't know. Like, we could go through specific scenarios. And oh, I no, like no, no. I would love to go through specific scenarios. So, what particular aspects of anarchist theory do you believe are in our like inapplicable to the modern world, or like what elements of it do you think sort of fail when put into practice? Um, I feel like just as a whole, it's tough to like give such a broad statement that would categorize like exactly why it fails. Um. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, hold on. I've never argued the point that previous anarchist societies haven't failed. I no, no, agree no. to That's that. What I'm talking about. Oh, you're talking um, about the theory specifically. Then why would you make a statement like everyone laughs at anarchist theory, everyone's moved on, something, something, and then when you come on here, you go like, well, I don't know, it's just really broad. Like, I don't know. Like, what elements of theory do you no, disagree I'm, with? You asked me to make a broad statement about why anarchism is fundamentally flawed, and I can't precisely do that. You know, what? I'd have to run you through specific scenarios in which it fails to make my argument. What's your what's your what's your political ascription? Uh, I'd say like left liberal. Damn. All right. Why are you punching left, comrade? What's up? So all I'm saying is that mm -hmm. one of the biggest ways you can control your budget is to control the place you live in. And that sometimes if you're a poor person, sometimes moving to a different area can be a good way managing your budget. That's all I'm saying. Is there anything there that you disagree with? Uh, yeah, that sometimes the uh, costs associated with moving are substantial and they can prevent people from moving, especially if you're disabled or have a family. Okay. Yeah, substantially so. You do realize the entire video that I have just watched, of yours, um, is a is a screed of arguments you would have argued against two years ago. Some of these arguments are riddled with survivorship bias. Some of them no, sound very whoa, similar whoa, whoa, to arguments. You're, 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 going, you're going way over course. So if you're like a fucking disabled war veteran with a family of 27 or whatever. And you no, 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 no. If you're a regular, oh, okay. one of the many Americans who lives paycheck to paycheck or can't afford a $300 emergency. Not if you're a disabled war veteran with 87 children. If you can't, both if you can't afford broken. anything in your life, then how are you even affording your current rent? What? Because co moving is an additional cost. Because you Not add it that to the much, existing and you'd cost. be saving money after moving. You'd move to someplace cheaper. Uh, for one, I don't know what your experience has been moving around when you're poor, but usually moving to a place that is so cheaper that is that it is very quickly outpacing the initial expense of moving means you're going to be moving very, very, very much farther from uh, places where you can find work or places where you already have um, uh, uh, inroads. If you have children, right this now, becomes the United infinitely States is harder. the lowest it's ever been in the history of the whole world. If you can't find a, a job at 3.5%. Right, you should kill yourself. Yeah, I know. Probably, yeah, you probably, you're not going to make it anyway. Yeah, exactly. So, and th so, this so, is, so, wait, and this wait, is, wait, 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 wait. So let's oh, immediately please. drop the argument you can't find work. That's a bullshit claim. You wait, can't find what? Work. You do, wait, 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 wait. The unemployment being low doesn't mean that you can just instantly find a fucking job when you move. You would say this. The opportunity cost of moving is substantial. It's not just. It's not just okay. the first and last month you put down as a deposit. College student world. You what the fuck? Do you, you don't know destiny. You, find, you don't I know, know anything you. Mr. about Mom me. And Dad paid, Mr. Mommy and Daddy paid for your school. I promise you I know more than you about this, okay? So then then I, respond to the not, fucking arguments rather than yes, characterizing what I have to say. So, the first one, and last month's rent deposit, the actual cost of moving, the opportunity all, cost of leaving your job. All, these are huge institutional oh barriers that you don't give a fuck about because you're so triggered by the left. Hold on, you've just acknowledged that you found it to be journalistically legitimate to go to places that underwent serious rioting and talk to people who were affected, including small business owners, minorities, recent immigrants, who, uh, by the way, are largely democratic constituencies, but whose views haven't really been represented in popular media narratives. Because How so? On so well, I mean, because, I mean, they, the, uh, I, I, the one way, I don't know if you've read all my articles, but I've mentioned this in a couple, one way that I sort of characterize their political sentiments in this, I'm thinking of, of, of definitely Minneapolis, St. Paul, but also other places like Chicago, Milwaukee, uh, Seattle, etc. Uh, they, they tend to be sort of small C conservative in their cultural and political attitudes, but they're still Democrats. They're not pro-Trump. They're not, they don't have any affinity with the Republican not Party. Being represented? But many of the people for whom the riots slash protests were experienced as a profound personal tragedy 
that threaten their personal safety and the safety of their children. Like I talked to a man in Minneapolis who I just kind of came across randomly. I didn't even really purposely seek out these people, but they're just so widespread and so easy to find that they were impossible to miss, who is a, re- a Somali immigrant who, when the riots occurred, he had to deal with largely, this is according to him, this is not me, this is him, largely white, black-clad anarchists coming into his neighborhood in Minneapolis, lighting shit on fire and threatening to burn down his building that he lived in with children. Okay. And he had to go plead with them not to burn it down. So when the thing I'm, I'm is, we're, we're, do, like, we're yeah, doing it not, again. It's not pro-Trump. Well, so the, the thing that, is, that's the type of person. We're doing it again. Nobody on in America is pro-burning down apartment blocks with children. So when you say this guy's political position isn't being represented by BLM, what you're kind of implying no, is no, that no, BLM no, 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 is no, pro-burning no, down no, apartment no, no, blocks. Implying. I'm not implying that. Okay. I'm saying you asked me for an example of the type of person whose sentiments are not generally reflected in popular media wait, narratives. Wait, wait, wait. But wait, that he's anti-arson. Everyone's anti-arson. Well, not everyone. Not the not the revolutionary anarchist. No, who no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. You can't. Wait, wait, wait. You realize what you just did there, right? You see that little pivot? You just said these people's positions aren't being represented in major media, and now you're trying to suggest that major media position is pro-arson. What are you talking no, about? No, I'm not. You, you, you I'm did. Not suggesting that. You just, you're, you're attributing to me a suggestion that I didn't make at all. Well, you just said, and pardon, you said me, no pardon me if I misremember. So you said I, no one's in favor of arson. I mean, I would assume that the people who committed arson attacks are in favor of arson. Ge- well, generally, no. I mean, people who kill aren't always pro-murder, usually. Most people are anti-murder conceptually. Wait, so you think, you, you, you think that people who intentionally set fire to buildings can't be said to be in favor of arson? Wait, no, I'm saying saying it's though that's a political position that the person whose house nearly was burnt down isn't being represented by is ridiculous. The the landlord can't just walk away unless he's able to sell the property. I mean, he is tied to that property. The the renter is not so much. But so wait, but so is a homeowner. Again, like I don't have a problem with homeowning and I don't have a problem with property management. I have a problem with landlords. I, I, I mean, are you trying to say like the landlord is like somehow exploiting them? Because I, I honestly see yes. this as like the landlord is absorbing a lot of the financial burden for somebody else to live there. Well, no, because there should not be a reason for everyone to just buy a house to begin with. Like you can just like rent it. It should be decommodified or you should be able to rent it from the government. Uh, the commodification of housing has been the consequences of the commodification of housing has been a disaster of the human race. Like, let me give you an example. You're talking to me right now on a phone or on a computer computer okay um is it uh is it a laptop or a desktop desktop okay uh let's say we live in a world where that desktop either a costs 20 times as much as it does right now or b you can never actually own it you can only get it from a rentier who will sell it to you for uh, uh like one quarter of its value cost per month and you have to live your entire life using that service at the behest of someone else any damage done to the computer any uh, weird programs you install any fucky viruses that you accidentally bundle your way into all of these are a consequence for you not only because the computer is harmed but because then you have to deal with the computer's owner. And that is your only option. Your only you option to have a computer. You don't have to rent. Wait, wait. You what can... can you do? Wait, what's the alternative between renting and owning a house? No, I'm saying the alternative to being a renter is to buy a property. Right, so that's uh, what I was saying. You, so the only way know, out of this exploitative worldview, system is to have yeah. an enormous amount of money that most people don't have access to. You Why are you so you, fucking mad, dude? All of these oh are arguments God. you would have made against Sargon two years ago. No, it's actually the same arguments that I've always made. As I've said, one of the things that worries me about when I talk about is systemic or structural things is there will all be, always be clueless, dumb fuck college kids like you. The you haven't made a single counter argument to my point. Let me know I know you're I really fucking sentence. mad that you're getting let talked down to right now by one of your previous chatters, but if you could address the arguments shit. I'm making. Oh, let me know. Are you done? Can I actually finish a fucking sentence? Is it a point? Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. So just because there are systemic or structural barriers in front of you doesn't mean that you are literally a handicapped, mindless fucking retard that cannot do anything. In Nobody your life. said this. Why is everything out of your mouth a straw man? Let me know when you're done. Why is everything a straw man? I'm sorry. I thought that we could interrupt you, you anytime that, I took contention that, with one of your points. Is that not that something you like to say at the beginning of the debates? So do you think that it's literally impossible for every poor person to move to a. Uh, Nobody poor believes poor that! Okay. So then you have to come up with a deposit. Sure. That's one thing you have to do. One, you said just find a new job after you move. 
Obviously, you fucking moron, you would find a job before fucking moving. You can comprehend that, right? You know Most people can't can afford do. a $300 emergency. I'm aware of the fact that it is possible to move. Nobody is arguing against that. Only that it is very difficult. There are systemic barriers which prevent people from doing this easily. And in some areas, it is not possible to find a cheaper apartment within that city unless you're willing to literally like uh, uh, go into like Skid Row area, which can be you know, a danger post for a lot of people. If you have kids, all of these issues are multiplied exponentially. Moving no one here is saying it's not hard to move. All I said Nobody's saying it's impossible to move, Destiny. Why do you keep arguing against the straw said. man? So, for, so to iterate, while certain elements of labor exploitation have mostly been cold over the past hundred years, like hey, slavery... Second, second, my mom's talking. All right, I love you, Mom. All right. Um... I swear I'm not acting. I swear I'm not trolling right now. Hey, listen, it's okay. I love my mom too. Um, while certain elements of labor exploitation have been more or less cold over the past hundred years, the broader level of wealth expropriation from the underclass of society. Dude, I swear I'm not trolling. This, this is an happen. incredible bit, I have to say. <laughs> you want to talk to my mom? She's a fundamentalist Christian. I don't doubt it. Can I get some zoomers in chat real quick? So I, I guess what you're trying to say is you, you don't, you, instead of a bottom up answer, you would prefer a top down answer. Top down. I'm trying to create a bottom up answer, which means I can still get services that people need without having to tax them by having corporations still pay for those services, as you're saying, but they voluntarily buy things that they want versus me trying to tax them. And the reason why I'm so scared of taxing, taxing them is, is several reasons. You, you just said you want to like tell big companies to pay you more so the federal government can pay for the bridge. Yeah, That sounds them. like top down to me. No, the government is beholden to my will. I'm a tax paying citizen. I no, it vote. isn't. There's no data to show that's true. Wait, yes, there is. Wait, do I get to vote no. on what Coca Cola does? No, yes, by not buying Coke. Yes, no, no, no. that vote with you your wallets. No, that you doesn't do. wait. wait, that doesn't work. Nobody votes with yeah. their wallets. People buy what's convenient. No, no. why do you think that entire thing uh, uh, about diversity training? Why did Coke have diversity training? Because it makes them look good. Thank you, because we, as a culture, can affect them. Yes, no, we wait. have more effect on Coke than we do our government. Wait, no, 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 no. Wait, hold on. First Horrible of all, wait, 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 first of all, government institutions have also had diversity training. For, they've been doing it for longer, by the way. Second know, of all, Coca-Cola cashing in on a trend that uh, Robin D'Angelo has started uh, does not mean <laughs> that they are suddenly beholden to the will of the people. Third of all, that... Uh, diversity training was not brought about by public backlash or will. It was brought about by a collection of contractors who make their money by convincing CEOs that they'll be less likely to get canceled on Twitter if they can teach their uh, their 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 employees about neo pronouns. But that isn't a yes. bottom up procedure. That isn't us voting with our wallets. That's just standard corporate virtue signaling. Wait, and they've wait been doing a minute. It so, for so you're telling me that being afraid of being canceled on Twitter, as you said, they're more afraid. Of being canceled on Twitter than being attacked by the government. Wait, no, there. Wait, hold on. Coca Cola has Is that spent. What you're Coca Cola has spent millions on lobbying and on preventing taxes from being raised. They That's spent how many afraid. thousands on a PowerPoint? No, they're more afraid of the government. Everybody's they more afraid of the, the government. government. No, no, stop. No, this is irresponsible and highly reductive, okay? The idea Tell that me. the average American citizen has more control over the behavior of a corporation than their government is not true. In addition to the fact that we have systems of transparency for the government that allows us to analyze their behavior and actually directly hold them accountable, we also have, additionally, the fact that they are directly beholden to us. Boycotts don't work. Voting with your wallet doesn't work. There are a few examples of effective boycotts in American history, and they're usually localized or in industries where it's possible for there to be a stopgap or a bottleneck, like yeah. the Alabama um, busing boycotts back during the uh, civil yeah. rights movement. Examples like that function. But when there, there has not been an instance, in as far as I can remember, human history where a corporation has been brought low by unethical behavior without the arm of the state weighing down on them. The state is the only thing that can reign in corporations, nothing else. So that is the only thing we can do. Wait, I was the boomer in that example? I'm 25. Bro, you're the one having tech support issues, not me. You was, buddy, 
I'm a fucking streamer. All my shit's checked out. I promise you it was your end. Yeah, well, chat would beg to differ based on their boomer spam right now. It was your... It was your headset. It wasn't your microphone. Okay. No, the future's... Dude, the future's now, bro. I'm telling you. All right. It's Fortnite time. Yeah. It's Minecraft now, actually. If you watch PewDiePie, nah, dude, you Minecraft, know. Nah, Minecraft is old. Dude. We're younger. We're really out here. Here, sorry. Once this vacuum turns off, I'll actually engage you. About no your problem. Like that. That's why they named it the Freedom Dividend. And they were marketing this to be able to do... To be something that could be supported from both sides. And... So when it was actually became apparent that it was mostly supported from Democrats, they leaned into that messaging and they made it so that it's a base floor actually from his policies, that that would just be a beginning of welfare and don't it could you, open the door. Don't you think structuring your policies around who gives you the most support in the public venue is a little bit like odd? Like, it's not that he structured the policy technically. It was how they market, how they said it to the people. So I'm not against calling it the freedom dividend or anything. I think that kind of like phony patriotism is really good at playing towards independence. I don't have a problem with that. What I do have an issue with, though, is this feeling I have that Yang is never willing to take a position if he feels like it would cost him, honestly, support from Republicans. He I took that position about the... Uh, okay, you're right. Never mind. I was going to say the homeless people that was so yeah, inflammatory. No, I, but... think, I think he's actually willing to drop report from Demo uh, uh, you know, support from Democrats at this point. But from Republicans, it feels like he's not really willing to. Like, he, he sat there and listened to some these screeds from Tucker Carlson on the nature of the Democratic Party and just... I mean, he didn't address it at all. I'm not expecting I, him to debate he, Tucker Carlson. It's just those, like he could have at least offered like a milk toast pushback. But some that. some of those things, though, he agrees with. I mean, the fact of the matter the is, is that Congress Party is like Congress has been white, childless liberal like not that, people. not that. The fact that they're not getting shit done. Why we haven't they? got shit done because of republican obstructionism you're right right but that's so still, yeah but so that's, when, when, but the when rural Tucker's people like, don't understand that the rural people don't understand that all they're saying is we we don't the democrats aren't getting shit then done tell them <laughs> then tell them the reason why democrats can't get this big 3.5 trillion bill done isn't because of the two moderate democrats in their midst it's because of the 50 republicans that's the main reason why we hyper fixate on our own moderates because the Republicans are utterly unwilling to care about the American people. The idea that like innovation can only happen if if 40% of the money made by an enterprise goes to the person who owns it is ludicrous. At the end of the day, we're not talking about capitalism versus socialism in terms of innovation. Those systems just decide who gets the money. How, but what if the... What if the entrepreneur, someone like Elon Musk, who puts most of his capital into new innovation? I, I agree with you that it's a problem if people are just siphoning money out through rent seeking behavior and not doing anything to, to further innovation. But you also have this problem of diverting resources to the people who are the most productive in society. Like, how does your system solve that problem? Wait, how is Musk? How is Musk the most productive person in society? I guarantee well, I'm you. I'm not saying he's the most productive person in society. I'm just saying he he is going. He is planning on going to Mars. I don't know the government. Well, no, wait. Government. He's not. His team of engineers are. This is right, a right, weird I, capitalist I like propaganda thing. I don't get it. Where you attribute everything that workers do to the person who owns right. the labor of the workers. Um, do, you, he, do you deny that Musk is the one that is organizing? the the spearhead to go to mars that he is the one that has put the capital resources towards that yeah because like, because he had the money yeah people, but if it but weren't for him the business people. would still have the money the workers could democratically decide well, well, to invest that money well let's let's because i think adam asked a question that i was sort of dovetails yeah. into something i was going to ask yeah so, totally so let, so let, you you so the musk <laughs> You're you're basically saying that the workers could like a bunch of people could get together and decide they want to go to Mars. Is that the argument that you're making? Like, what is what wait, the, wait, do you think there's something magical about being a business owner that gives you like 80 higher IQ than the people who work there? Mar wait, Elon Musk didn't just wake up one day and decide, like, I will now single handedly divert the resources. And he, he and, didn't. He didn't. No, didn't. he has he has managers and experts and consultants who he works with. All of those people are doing work, and their work would continue on with or without Elon Musk. Do, do you think it was someone else's idea to to go to Mars? I don't. I I guarantee you, Musk wasn't the first person to say that Mu they should Musk go to Mars. Is, so Musk is doing this for his his mother, 
like an oh, ex-girlfriend i don't or, like, wait why what, what? what is his motivation like, wait wait wait, wait 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 these these are highly mis wait 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 these are highly misleading questions work is done by people who work Elon right. Musk has done work, but the most of what he does is own. That's where his wealth comes from. He doesn't get a paycheck that he earns for the work he does in a day. He extracts wealth from the people under him who do that work. And when, if he ever goes to Mars, it will not be because the brilliant, glorious leader, Elon Musk, I don't know like why we hero worship these people. He's just a dude. There are people under him who are probably every bit as capable, intelligent, and hardworking. I'd be willing to bet more hardworking because Elon Elon Musk is very wealthy, and we know how wealthy people tend to spend their time. But I guarantee you, these people would be just as willing to invest their wealth into the glorious utopian projects that Elon Musk has so egotistically decided to bequeath upon us. What good can be extrapolated from the impending tide of global warming? Um, I mean, I don't think any good can be extracted from it, but that's not necessarily my point. My point is that we've been through more serious upheavals in terms of you know economy, in terms of society, the difference is one of those upheavals gave it. us technology, and one of them will ruin the planet. Do you real like uh, this is it didn't wait, just give this, us technology. wait this is th wait this would be like this would be like I get in a car crash and I break both of my legs and you drag me out and you're like cheers up buddy you've gone through bigger wouldn't you say your wedding day was more substantial than this like what the well, fuck yeah, does that have to do with anything that. no because I don't think it'd be like a wedding day I think. Instead, I'd say like, oh, well, you've already experienced a heart attack and you've managed to recover from it. Wasn't, it right? The so Industrial now, Revolution led to an increase in the standards of living of most people after an initial bumpy period. Yeah, for a while we had fucking cities. Period, yes. Decades and decades of like, Yes, yes. Inequality. Decades and decades of plague and death are going to be much better than what the Earth is about to experience. It's not poetic language. It's all in the UN climate reports, which we're free to read together. I'm sorry. I don't know like what level of privilege right. you're operating on right now, but the idea that like kids working in factories for like 60 or 70 years or like union clashes with bosses more of that class conflict or like diseases being rampant in london compares in any way to th a cataclysm that is projected to impact the lives of every human on earth and kill probably upwards of hundreds of millions within the next century this like oh, no, i've never seen these numbers the waters will like rise we have people living on coasts we have people living in areas where they rely on sustenance from plants that won't bloom in higher temperatures we have people People who live on the cusps of deserts. We have animal species that give us pharmaceuticals that we need that will not live with these changes. The Amazon is burning and part of that is controlled, but a lot of that is coming from global warming too, because natural efforts to stop the really? fires have not I mean, worked. From what I've seen, it's almost entirely controlled. It's, you know, because of deforestation efforts. I don't think this fire would have ever started or gotten to the extent that it's at if not for you know, people directly interfering here. I, I, don't think I never said it wouldn't have gotten to the point change. that it's at. I'm saying that efforts to stop it by certain agents have failed in large part because the flyer is more naturally ready to spread because it's hotter. I have not actually read things about this. You, I mean, then why I, would you assume? Sure. What? what do you then mean, why, why would you assume, assume and argue the contrary if you haven't read anything on this? Um, because it just seems like. Because it, like seems, because it seems because it seems like I'm well, irrational because I use flowery yeah, pose yeah. and I care about a big change to society. No, it is the I've... attachment to the status quo that defines the liberal. You are desperate to find ways to paint this over to say like, yeah. oh, it's not a big. Yeah, and I'm listen, totally dude, I'm sorry. You're going right you're going to live to see the world burn. I mean, I am too. I'm literally only nine years older than you. But you're going to live to see it. I don't know if this is like self preservation, like you're denying, so you're you're not you don't like accept the overwhelming yeah, yeah, dread. Like, this could right this now. could really literally be the end of the human species, more so than the nuclear winters threatened by the Cold War ever posed to us. More so, because at least then we had shelters. But this fundamentally poses the threat to every aspect of the supply chain that makes modern civilization possible. I think, like the the hypocrisy, you know, argument that I'd be making about specifically paying people that do labor for you. I don't think that that one is very widely held. I think you're just latching onto the word hypocrisy there. Um, when we're talking about people, to, so it's not you about know, the specific okay, argument. You, it's about so the wait. idea that socialists should be held to a higher standard because the Why practical, con because the practical consequence of what, first of all, because the fact that you think socialists should be held to a higher standard as opposed to a different standard is very odd because you know what well, socialists tend not to care mm -hmm. about? Shoplifting. But you would never look at a socialist shoplifting or advocating for shoplifting and then go, oh, well, they're living by their principles. I don't have a problem with that. 
What you do is you hold them to capitalist moral standards and then add on top of it your expected projected socialist standards. Socialists don't do this in there the other no direction. Social, wait, there is no socialist standard for shoplifting. Wait, hold on. A at the idea that um that uh the the like the public commons and all the goods within it have been seized and that gatekeeping all those uh like uh commodities behind like a price gate um it is like not something that the proletariat have a right to circumvent at the expense of corporate entities. Wait, whatever Vosh, possible. you've been fighting me on whether or not it's a socialist standard to pay people that do labor for you, but now you're about to say to me that a socialist standard is shoplifting. How are no, you going to try this? No, I'm so, hold. Oh my god. All right, hold on. We'll try this a little bit better. Okay. My point is that socialist standard isn't what I care about. I care about doing good and bad things. If you cared about holding people to the standards of their ideology, you wouldn't mind when people who are pro-rape raped, or when fascists did whatever the fuck they're up to. You obviously don't actually care about holding people to the standards of their own ideology, because you don't agree with everything every other ideology suggests people do. If you did, then you would be a moral relativist, and nobody likes being a moral relativist. They're cringe, okay? What you are is somebody who holds a higher standard for socialists. Or, in other words, you make it harder to be a socialist than any other type of person. A fascist advocate, well, you wouldn't agree with them no matter what, and that's fine. And a capitalist just has to do whatever they want to do. This is kind of a DGG line, isn't it, right? Like, capitalists don't no. have to... Well, hold, wait. Capitalists don't have to, you know, reinvest all of their money or specifically, like, pay their workers the lowest wage possible or whatever, because capitalists get to defer to some sort of generalized mode of efficiency. Their moral claim isn't that they should exploit workers to the greatest extent or own private capital to the greatest extent. Their concern is just that they do whatever is most efficient for the making of business. But that's not really capitalism, right? Capitalism isn't just doing what's most efficient. There are a set of very specific okay. positions on what is or is not acceptable within capitalism, which systems facilitate the best outcomes. But nobody gets mad at a capitalist for buying from industries that have been subsidized. This is one of the ways in which people have historically attacked socialists. You can't argue against our positions, so instead, you hold us to a higher standard. Okay, so let me clarify, just so we don't have to waste any time. There are segments of our economy that are hurt by immigration. It seems to be high school dropouts for the most part. But I think we can address that with other redistributive forms of economic policy because it helps everybody else. And high school dropouts are a pretty small percentage of the population. Hmm. Interesting. But a lot of these immigrants are actually not taking up the jobs of very college educated people. You know, they're working in the agricultural. That's the reason Cesar Chavez, you know, <clears throat> gained such much, such prominence in California. Yeah, and they tend like to take low-skill jobs. Sure. And, and that's where they're going to fly out of them. And unfortunately, with those high school dropouts, they're not going to get very much about that. You kind of hung yourself on that one. What? Wait, what? Wait. I've said high school dropouts <laughs> lose out like a fraction of a percentage point of real wages. Wait, what do you mean? Okay, so you conceded to me. Wait, what am I? Wait, what have I conceded to you? you? If you let me finish, you conceded to me that illegal immigrants are taking up these low skill jobs, in which low skill, you know, if you were to look at it, I think high school dropouts would be included in that. And so that's a lot of people being displaced because of this immigration. No, it's not. You know, you look at, yes, it is. No, it's not. That's why the high school dropout was the smallest number of people whose education, like, receipts were tallied. It's a very small group of people, like, relative to the broader population. You realize when we're talking about economic policy, we have to work off averages, right? Like, we can't say, like, oh, this policy could hurt, like, help the whole country, but it would hurt Timmy over there. Like, oh, look at poor Timmy. Like... We, we can't do that, you know? Like, here's an example. Wait, okay, here's an example. Okay, what if, okay, we were in a classroom, okay? And there are 30 students, and two of the students come back to the class, and they've got a fuck ton of candy bars. And for some reason, okay, for some reason, um, oh, I get it. Two of those kids are, like, uh, 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 lactose intolerant. They can't have the chocolate bars. But they've got a fuck ton of chocolate bars. So it's like, okay, we're going to give chocolate bars to everyone except for Susie 
and Tim. And everyone else gets a bunch of chocolate bars. And it's like, that's fucked up. Why are two people missing out while everyone else gets a benefit? But then one of the 28 other students can just take their apple and their and their their little like granola bar and give it to Susie and Tim. And that way, everyone benefits, even the people who lost the apple and the granola bar. That way, like there's a net benefit and we compensate for the small segment that didn't get anything. Wow, that's a very right-wing way to measure the economy. What, you know, is it, that you, what does that mean? It means that you're looking at the way MSNBC and Fox no, News... No, no, specifically outline. Right? No, 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 no. Quite, quit. I get it. It's very impressive with your Instagram circle jerk buddies. Like, oh, this is right-wing thinking. Why don't you tell me what I said specifically that's incorrect? Because so far, right-wing seems like a dog whistle for correct but inconvenient to you. From yeah. my perspective, what is unethical about a lefty owning a business? A lefty owning a business by default isn't unethical, but if they own the business and they run it like any other capitalist, sure, why okay, runs a, owns a business and has wage slave employees? Okay, what what about that? Sorry. Is I think that's unethical. I think that if you own a business, it should be a co-op, and you should be using your money to put up to prove the concept and to and to run it in a moral way. If you believe that exploitation of workers, that paying a wage and collecting a profit off of your employees is necessarily bad, you should have a rev share, profit share, um, employee stock program to negate that from happening. I you agree. That is the thing you should do. But again, the difference between no, no, super no, 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 no. and on. obligatory. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not, hold on. I'm not using the vocabulary here. Okay. This I'm in fine. destiny world. I'm saying that it would be unethical. You know not, I would like it or I prefer not. I'm saying it would be unethical, in my opinion. If you're a leftist, it would be unethical to run a business where you are a capitalist extracting uh, uh, surplus labor. That would be unethical. Not I wouldn't like it or I would prefer not. I say it would be unethical. And okay. I think it would be ethical to be morally righteous for you to run a business in a way that, that complies or comports with the ethical system the, that you who have. Who is the recipient of the harm? For, for what? For that, for that example. If, if you run a business, the recipient of the harm would be the workers, the okay. laborers. And if you didn't start a business, where would they be working? I, I don't know, somewhere else. Somewhere else. And if you started a business, and they had an opportunity to work at your place or another, and they chose yours, when they could have had another, what would your absence have meant to them and the, the harm done to their world? You were the one committing the immoral action. So... There's no actual change in the harm done to the world. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Well. But that, that doesn't matter, though. It is the only thing that matters to me. And because you your participation in no, these systems... No. Oh, no, hold on. Wait, wait. So, wait, 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 stop. Just if your participation in these systems... And let's be perfectly clear here, okay? The crime of capitalism is not that there are businesses that are privately owned. The crime is that there is nothing but... Whether or not a lefty chooses to open a business has no bearing on the existence of capitalism. And it also does nothing but, and this may sound like a capitalist argument, but I do believe this, expand the opportunities for workers in the region because they have N plus one places to potentially work at though, furthering their opportunities and potentially giving them a better shot. The okay, implementation of a business only adds utility. It doesn't derive it. Whether or not you're a lefty. The DPRK is in a buffer state. The DPRK is absolutely a buffer state. It is not a buffer state. They are under not wait. The okay, wait, hold on. The only reason China gives a single shit about the DPRK is because if they didn't, South Korea would become whole Korea and then American that's, that's, military that's bases just factually would be within. incorrect. That is just historically factually incorrect with this with the history that has happened in Korea for the last two hundred years, you are wrong. You do not know a fucking single thing about no, the history I of Korea. No, I'm if that absolutely is correct on this one. You are absolutely wrong. Wait, you do why, not know wait, anything about Korea. Why, if you think that why is the reason. would China do that? Why would China do what, Fosh? Why would China stick its neck out during the Korean War to prevent a total conquest of Korea and then occupy it or, or support it militarily, putting their soldiers' lives on the line, and then hold that position... And then in the geopolitical uh, conflict that because takes place in the, during that Because region. the Soviet Union was never going to help the Koreans. And China and Korea have had... China doesn't give a had... fuck about Korea. China yes, gives... they do. No, they... no do you wait. Know that, do, you, do, you, do you know the historical ties between China and Korea? That's not like, how over the last nation years? states work. That's wait, not, are, we, are but... you seriously arguing that they supported North Korea and allow that festering shithole of a dead monarchist state to continue to exist? Because They're, they care? They actually 
but they do care in a way. It's not all geopolitics. Some this of it is, is, no, is some of it is history. Geopolitics. Wait, hold on. No, so some of it Marxism is this. Some, some until of it, is... it involves criticizing China, and then we're getting sentimental. No. The reason why China maintains the existence of North Korea, the only reason, by the way, that North Korea has No, that's just factually incorrect. The like, do you know anything about it hasn't Cuba? imploded Bosh, is because it's, Bosh, a, it's you... a de facto vassal of China. And the it's only not reason a vassal of China. It's because they it's, don't that's want just Korea. Actually, that's just actually correct. You are basically saying that the Koreans have no self-identity at all, Wait, which they on. do Wait, in the North on. and the North South. North Koreans politically have nothing. You are correct in that. Absolutely I nothing. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. That's not what I implied. Wait. Then we agree. They have nothing. No, we don't. No, we don't. You have no evidence to substantiate that China and Korea are China and the DPRK just just are only politically aligned. That's not you, true. It's not it's not just politics. Do things for other countries. Do you not realize that they're not just countries? They're also people that like supported each other. I'm sorry. Like during the occupation, like of like they, they both people fought the Japanese don't fascists. Make policies countries do. People vote, except in China and North Korea, by the way, where you have no, a vote, failing Democratic remnant Central. of a democracy North and Central. none. People aren't what we care about here. You don't care about the you people in Korea. You sound like every America. liberal who's unwilling to acknowledge the existence of imperialism in America. Oh, why did America do the Marshall Plan? Oh, well, we just cared about our European neighbors. We have history with them. No! Oh, it's it's geopolitics! Liberal? Countries invest military and economic resources to protect At their the own best start interests. This conversation, I was a Nazi and now I'm a liberal. Oh boy. I know, you're very okay. ideologically idiosyncratic when it benefits you. Well, ultimately, I am a bit of a technocrat because I don't really believe that the average worker will be able to predict what is the best for them i mean all we have to do is look at the lump in the yeah, united states yeah no see this is the problem i have you're an authoritarian you don't believe the average person is intelligent enough to meaningfully like dictate or guide the society that they live in that's the problem that i keep running well, into are you for direct democracy yeah absolutely anytime the reason people are stupid isn't because they're like that fundamentally. They're stupid because we live in a highly ideolog or sorry, a, a, a society of ideology where they're taught things that are contrary to their class interests. But we can fix that. It's just like, like well, that you, seems authoritarian to me. <laughs> well, no, just by making the education system more respective of actual reality, like that's I think not. Well, really yeah, that's what I mean. I don't. I don't mean. I'm not like saying genetically like an oil worker could never get out of lump and brawl status but until like you know that's why you need a vanguard like the who is going to actually go out you're and educate an, people on socialism it's not going to be the capitalists it's going you're to be making an anti-democratic argument though i'm okay with certain elements of a vanguard party you know imagine if the revolution was tomorrow maybe we could work with comrade aoc or senator bernie sanders Beautiful. and they can oh you say you but they're doing more right now to advance the material <laughs> interest of the common person than you and i ever could in a thousand lifetimes so i'll you know i'll withhold my disdain but yeah like say like they're you know what if a vanguard party is a democratically elected group of politicians beholden to the interests of a populist left and then when revolutionary activity takes place we can sort of work with them to integrate the the, the, the revolutionary guard into the means of production into the broader state apparatus. But that doesn't necessarily entail any contempt for the intelligence of the average worker the way you've kind of demonstrated. You, well, you, I think I, right you now asked me is. if I wanted direct democracy, but like kind of disdainfully. Do you have an issue with direct democracy? Well, yeah, I do. I'm more, I'm more into representative democracy. I feel like most leftists would argue that representative democracy is a bad meme. A bad meme? Yeah, right? Because you're preserving power hierarchies and relations that could be... Well, I'm be not against some... hierarchy. This is the I'm problem I keep running into. I want to do left unity, but I feel like... I feel like you're less interested in the liberation of the working people and more interested in, like, a state-coded red where you and other academics, like, are the ones who are deciding what the stupid proletariat have to do next. You should look up Portugal and their drug policies. Freedom makes societies better. Just a better place to live. For everyone. Listen, I, I've heard all this harm reduction arguments, and I used to be a little bit of a druggie myself, mm -hmm. so I, I sort of understand. But it's harm reduction. You, you can't get rid of the harm. But the you can't either. The best way to treat these things... Oh, sorry, my computer. 
Peter just went to sleep. Sorry. No worries. But you, you can't either. You also can't get rid of the harm. Uh, I mean, not completely, but I think it's just kind of insane to say that, like, if we just let people do it, you know, then, you know, like, whatever. Like, no, not no, not whatever. We build society in a way to incentivize positive outcomes. So we try to get them medical help if they need medical help. But we recognize that on a surface level, we don't get any benefit from just flat out locking up people who engage in these behaviors. And this, by the way, this is for an extremely negative thing like heroin addiction. This would not, like downstream, when we're talking about stuff like anal sex, you would never be able to make an argument that these things should be made illegal. Um, I mean, it seems to work on countries like Saudi Arabia. Saudi is that the country? Is that where you want us to be living in Saudi Arabia? No, but listen, do you wait, think wait, is that way? Is that your like, model? Wait, wait, did you wait? Do you think that's like a point? Like, oh well, they can no, legalize just, everything. Look at Saudi Arabia. Like, yeah, well, no, damn, just, you're right. I agree. I don't want to look like Saudi Arabia. <laughs> That'd be preferable. Do you think Saudi Arabia does this stuff because they're like dumb and they hate like women and gays and stuff? Yeah. No. Yes. Wait. Yes. Yes. No. No. Yeah, no. 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 Yeah, no. Yes. That's the answer. Yes. Yes. They've been, like they've been as a society since like before the Ottoman Empire. Yeah. No. Sh yeah. And people can be dumb for long periods of time. No shit. Yeah. We kept slaves no. for centuries. Yeah. It's yeah. not dumb. It's not like they've just like inherited. Like, what argument do you think you're making right now? Look, this, they've been I doing they've been doing harmful things for centuries, and they're still doing it today. And their society is still a shithole that is deplored all around the world. Like they, they've just been around the block. Is my point. Like. They do these that? things because they've been around the block. China's been around for longer than almost any existing civilization. What are we like? I don't know if you've seen that like Twitter thread about like that that woman who who was like it's pretty much this woman who was like compiling tweets about people talking about like their work husbands. I don't know Maybe what we're. I don't. I don't. I wait. 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 I, I'm not. Wait. Wait. If we want to have a discussion about feminism in the West, it's not going to begin with the phrase. Did you see this tweet? Now, did uh, did the Marshall Plan have to be repaid, or nope. like, was there an interest? Then I, I wouldn't consider it imperial. Okay, they, you're not a leftist. How is that? How is that? Why is that? The Marshall Plan was literally a foreign policy vehicle for the United States of America to assert its geopolitical interests on the continent. I don't consider like asserting geopolitical interests to be a form of imperialism in and of itself. Holy shit! Okay, imperialism has to be has to be an economic relation. It's it's about the transfer of value. It was about, like, because keeping those countries in the Western Bloc ended up being economically prosperous to the U.S. Yes, but that that's not imperialism by definition. Though you can you can you can keep countries within your sphere of influence. You can influence them. You can even benefit from that relation without it being imperialism. Imperialism, a policy of extending a country's power and influence through diplomacy or military force. As of Google, do you want to move on to the next point? I'm not using the. I'm not using the. Oh, I definition. know you're not using the actual definition, buddy. But I actually do use the real definition, so we're gonna have to use this one if we want to have a conversation. Okay, why, is Google, why is Google the real definition? Who well, can provide Google? me a source that extends your definition, where it's only economic right. and it only takes place if there isn't an equitable transfer of resources? Give me a definition right now. Any source. So wait, can, you, can, you, can you repeat what you just your said? Your definition of imperialism is one that is only economic from a dominant to a lesser power, and it only takes place if the dominant power is extracting more wealth than they're putting into that country. Give me a definition yeah. of imperialism that includes only that and nothing else, because that is the definition you're using. Any definition. I'll even take a YouTube video so I can know what brain-dead troglodyte fed you uh, this Vladimir trash. Lenin, Vladimir Lenin, imperialism, the highest age of Give me a passage. I don't have a passage on hand. Okay, so Vladimir Lenin said imperialism is only an economic transfer where a larger power extracts more material wealth from a smaller power. That's what Vladimir Lenin said about imperialism. Or do you think that if I went back to that, I would find you're actually full of shit? Have you read State and the Revolution? Not State and the Revolution. It's imperialism, highest age of capitalism. Okay. Lenin would have called what I am describing imperialism. No, because what you what you described was just simply a, a transfer of power. Like, well, I can't believe I get called theory ignorant by these people. I don't know why you've gone so hard. I have never put so much effort into trying to investigate perceived hypocrisy on the part of another person okay. ever in any instance in my life. Okay, if we were to, if you really want to talk about consequentialism that bad, okay? If we were to take no, a consequential- I want to talk about why this matters to you, dude. Why not just Why care about making the world I better? Think people have the means to do so, have a higher calling to do so. And I think it is ethically wrong for you to float through life. And Why, not? Like Why shouldn't everyone do it then?
What? Why shouldn't everyone do it? Why should everyone only lefties do it? Act in accordance with their ethical principles to, to the Who greatest the fuck degree. Who cares with pe people? Wait, hold on. So I do you? Care. Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, 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 hold on. So for for like chauvinists or misogynists, do you think it's ethical for them to like rape people because it's a part of their like internally consistent misogynistic worldview that women are property? Sure, if that's part of their worldview, then yeah, then they're why, okay. Wait, that's wait, wait. Why, so you would you prefer? Wait, wait. I need to know the answer. I got, from, so, I got banned from Twitter because I made fun of alt writers for being fucking like half Persian or half Serbian okay, or fucking. But half there's a Persian. there's a difference you between. Wait, hold on. There's a difference between making fun of a person for being hypocritical, which is fine and always okay, and saying it's good if a person is consistent, even if their consistent values would lead to a lot more harm in the world. So I just want to be really clear because I don't want to misrepresent you. You think it's good if people are consistent, even if that consistency has them following up and doing things which are unethical. I, I mean, I think it's good to be consistent, but I don't think it's good to do unethical things. I okay. don't know how I'm supposed to answer this. Okay, so consistency is good, but unethical things are bad. I mean, I guess that's kind of tautological. Um, so you think that lefties should, if they open a business, it should be like a yeah. co-op revenue share, that kind of thing, because that's a more ethical. Yeah. Okay. Do you think that would be more ethical for anyone to do? Um, not necessarily, because I actually don't think that co-ops are like the, I don't think that's like the best thing to do. Not necessarily. I just can't, I can't imagine what would drive you to be so insistent on advocating that a group of people with a different set of political ideologies be consistent in a way that I don't think you fully understand to achieve an end that you don't even agree with. This, I, I actually can't fathom what roads we've walked. I look behind me and I see a maze. Because Why can't we just talk about what's good? It's so simple. Because if you're advocating for something and you don't live what you advocate for, it makes it feel like you don't Have actually- Have you seen a lefty ad saying that every or... single person who owns a business uh, should turn that business into a worker co-op? Yeah. Then call them people? out. I'm not saying that there aren't differences and that there aren't some things that are better. What I'm saying is that fundamentally, I don't think that overall the United States is better. I'm not saying that freedom of speech isn't good. I love freedom of speech. I think it's great. In fact, I think, yeah, I would. I would fundamentally say that if um, we enacted the same restrictions that China has on like um, the internet and stuff like that and its media sources, like, yeah, of course I'd be against that. Right, like those would be bad things. I'm not trying to. Um, so I'm not trying to downplay why would those you, things. Why would you mock me for saying that America's system of propaganda isn't as bad as these countries if you're not even willing to engage with the relative severity of the propaganda in these countries? Like, what what example, what argument would I have to provide you to budge you on this? It just seems like all the only thing you want to do is say, "Yeah, they're both bad," which I agree, they're both bad, but. There are critical distinctions in why they're different. Noam Chomsky wouldn't have written um, uh, Manufacturing Consent if Noam Chomsky was born in China because the way propaganda circulates there, the way the discourse is narrowed, sure. it's different there. He wouldn't have had to write it. He probably would have had to write pamphlets right. that would have circulated outside official channels talking about how the government just directly keeps you from talking about certain things. Right, right, right. No, no, no. And, and again, like, I'm not... I'm not saying that that isn't bad, right? And, and I think that's the thing that I've tried to say and perhaps have not said very well throughout this whole thing, is that I'm not saying that these other countries are good. I'm saying that the United States is also bad. And here's the thing, is that at the end of the day, you can think that because they are overt in China and because people can't talk about that stuff as openly, that is worse. And I would agree with you on that point. At the same time, that doesn't stop the propaganda in the United States from being just as insidious. Like, is it more overt? Insidious mean? Can people not talk as openly? Sure. What what do you mean? No, uh, it's not. Wait, hold like, on. I think that it's not that they can't as, talk as openly. Sorry. It's that they would get arrested by the government. And uh, do you have any questions for me, Vosh? I just. Do you understand how an average person who is watching this could come away thinking you're a fucking lunatic and that we should never have anything to do with socialism? 
This is why when I talk about socialism, I try to frame it through terms. This is why Bernie Sanders talks about socialism. He tries to frame it through terms that are relative to the interests of the proletariat. Kind of like what Lenin said, that it is important, lest you become a windbag as, as infantile as the left communists, to meet the proletariat at their level of radicalization. It is important to phrase pragmatic efforts in ways that relate to the interests of the average person. But do you understand how, like, what you've said, like, you would come off as, like, a lunatic to the average person? Um, if they haven't really done a lot of investigation, sure. I mean, I don't what like do Stalin. I wouldn't want to live in the USSR. I don't, I don't like him personally. I don't worship him. I'm not a tanky. But I just think that there were things that Stalin did, like industrialize the USSR the quickest in the entire world. Make the USSR have Hello, the second largest GDP per capita. Like, you have this a video is why on I me. learn about this stuff. You have a video on me called Vosh is Wrong About Immigration. Yeah, I, I do that. I do that. I do that. I, hey. I cited Vorhas. I don't really know. Hey, that's cool. I do that too. Hey, well, I'll, maybe clickbait. maybe I'll take a look at your videos sometime. We can uh, we can see uh, where, our, uh, where our disagreements on uh, um, uh, immigration are, because I have some very policy and yeah, fact-based... Um, go ahead, like... In terms of the immigration argument, I literally just cited Vorhaus, and I'll be like 100% honest. I haven't even looked into it that much, so if you want to prove me wrong, then 100% absolutely go ahead. All right. Yeah. Okay. And what What do you mean you don't understand the emotional labor argument? Like, men have to handle emotional labor just as much as women. I'm pretty sure I can find studies indicating that women are subjected to expectations of emotional labor far more. You're doing it in this conversation. You're saying that because women are better at socialization, that you think they you're entitled to their care. So that's like our so anecdotally, like it is already the case that women are subjected to far more severe expectations of emotional labor than men. Um, but with that being said. Again, like, why do you think that you're entitled to their help? Don't you think that helping yourself would probably be the best way out of this situation? You can't just help yourself. You're one a woman person. can't, dude. A woman can't just help you with your self-esteem problems. It doesn't work that yes, way. Yes, they can. No, they can't. I promise you, they can't. Nobody but you can fix those. No, you work together. That's what relationship. There's no point being in a relationship. If the other person's not going to do any work, they they're going to do work. That work just isn't going to help you with your brain state. Your brain state is yes, your it problem. Will. No, it I'm really sorry, but Wait, it Wait, so are you saying that relationships will not improve my mental health or any other insults mental health? Is that what you're trying to the yes. bring forth? Yes. Yes, 100%. Yes. Your issues are with insecurity and entitlement. Your issues are not with a lack of partnership. I, no. I, pro I promise it's, you, I promise you, okay? I, I swear to God, I no. promise you, this is absolutely no. true. It's, you know why? All right. So there's a socialist woman called Mary Marcy that says that women are more conservative. This is, that's why people like me and a lot of other insults are hated. It's because women are more prone to be more conservative. Okay, you've okay. For one, more women vote blue in America than red, so I don't know what they're referring to exactly. But you have completely pivoted off the point. I promise you, this is one of the things that frustrates me about the incel community. It's they 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 cling to this belief that um, uh, they cling to this belief that all their problems would be solved if they could just like get a girl to like them. It's not true. Trust me. I used to have self esteem issues personally. I did, believe it or not. And um, they were not at all solved. In fact, they were worsened by having a relationship because all of a sudden I was now subjecting a second person to my insane level of like, uh, like uh, uh, internalized rigor, you know, and internalized doubt. It it doesn't it doesn't fix it. It doesn't do it. There's there's no like magic bullet. Like there's no pixie dream girl. It it just doesn't work that way. You either learn to live with yourself alone I don't want or you a, suffer. I don't want a pixie. All right. I huh? just want. I just want somebody that's actually good. Yeah, and I wish you luck finding someone good. It's just not going to fix your problems. When well, Tucker Carlson brought up the transphobe thing, he, that he actually uh, low key was just like he shut that down and completely changed the topic. He said that the forward party with our we whenever we come out with all of our policies, it will be that all all the majority of Americans can agree with. And I think that that's a trans argument i think that the majority of americans do no, support trans that's, rights that has no he wasn't talking about trans americans just tucker carlson brought up trans people 
being crazy out of nowhere and yang just ignored it and talked about like americans generally supporting the things he advocates for it had nothing to do he just let it slide. he was talking about the policies of his party though and, and, he, and it, from there he yang said people he, mentioned anywhere in his policies not yet and i think that that could be never something will. that he needs to expand on the forward well, I mean, party never will because that would be partisan you can't weigh on that issue without demarking some kind of opposition Human, humanity like first and human-centered capitalism would be about lifting the quality of life. Slave lifting. owners call themselves humanists. You can find readings from them. I, 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 you need a specific saying like human-centered capitalism is what like neoliberals said when they set up sweatshops well, in Bangladesh. That's not enough. There are specific like actually taking instead of using the GDP as the main level of the, con of the economy, Factoring in quality of life, factoring in mental health, factoring in the use of like substances Tucker Carlson and addiction. Would say, Tucker Carlson would say that the best way to improve the mental health of trans people is to get them um, conversion therapy so they no longer have the delusion of gender dysphoria. And that's not what the forward party would stand for. The forward party will never weigh in on this issue because to do so would take away from the impression they're giving that it's possible to govern politically neutrally. But like i think that the people the independent and the libertarian type people they're they're more for personal freedom and personal freedom is trans rights that, and well, i think that I've, educating to them towards libertarians that. recently i can tell you that they are not consistent in their support for trans rights nothing You're but right. a specific advocacy for trans people will be read as advocacy for trans people that's why democrats have it on their websites you can see it right there they're open and bold about it don't you think it's a little bit odd that you're saying we should have to infer Yang's political positions? Like, don't you think it's a bit odd that the way this is structured means you're playing defense for him being deliberately ambiguous about the things he's advocating for? But so in the highest stage of capitalism, Lenin describes the function of financial capital in generating profits from imperialist colonialism as the final stage of capitalist development to ensure greater profits. So he doesn't mention anything about there being an unequitable transfer of resources, only that investment through capital is being done to further financial you know, interests. When Lenin uses capital, do you know what he means by capital? I know what capital yeah. means. Do you know what cap can you give in me the, the Marxist, Marxist sense capital? wealth that is used to replicate the production of the means of production? It's money making. It's wealth creating more wealth. It's yeah, I just said money. that, except in more Marxist terminology. But yeah, no, it's money making more money. It's 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 M M to M. It's prime. not money making more money. If you spend if you spend five dollars on a lottery dude. ticket and you make back two thousand, that's not capital. It's money or that it's capital that you can reinvest into the production of means production. Capital. There's industrial capital. There's also financial capital. There's also capital in the form of rent. I, 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 the form of are you a psyop? Are you sent here by the CIA? Are you? Uh, are you here to make me kill myself? So in Lenin's definition of imperialism does not say that the only types of imperialism is or one where there is an inequitable transfer of resources. Only that capital finance is used to bolster the wealth capital of the nation. Capital, by definition, is an unequal transfer of no, resources. No, it's not! It That's not what capital yeah, means! Yeah. Find me a definition of capital that has the word unequal in it at any point. Find me any definition from any source, any book, any YouTube video. You can Dos scroll it and shit on a napkin, and I will take that as a source. One of Dos Capital. Find me the quote. You're wrong. You were just wrong and, about and Lenin. You're wrong about you, everything. You I'm not fucking quote lining with you. Of, have you heard of the term circuit of capital? Have you have read you capital? I've read capital. Have you read capital? Of course I haven't read capital. Are you fucking crazy me? Are you kidding me? You haven't read capital. Well, so you ha well, you apparently have read imperialism, the highest stage of capitalism, and your definition of it was wrong. So, my, wait, wait, no, nothing we about Lenin's definition Lenin, says there has to be an unequitable distribution of resources. He only said they uh, that you would seek to profit from it. China is profiting from their investments in Africa and Latin America. That is why they're doing it. We are arguing whether or not my definition of Chinese businesses are me. investing in developing countries to make money me. off their labor markets. Should women be aware that 97, should anyone be aware that 97% of sexual people perpetrating sexual violence are male? Can I ask Is you, a, can I ask you a question and then I'll get back. I'm not trying to misdirect. Okay. okay I just want to ask you a question. Why are you such a like cuck white knight? Like, this isn't. Like, no, no, you're like white knighting true. like crazy, dude. This, this, like, why? Crazy. Why are you beta orbiting your own fucking wife and everyone else the pussy? Because this has nothing to do with beta. To do with children. I actually am a beta. Wait, why are you allowed to be around your wife? Isn't there isn't there like a statistically high chance of you or beating her?
I think that your wife should have the right to protect herself against you. Do you have his, her bedrooms? And does hers have a lock? Does yours need a lock? If, if <laughs> should have the right to I mean, should have the right to exclude men in any situation. Anyone should have the right to exclude anyone if they want, not in like a protected class right. sense, but if you want to spend time with whoever you want to spend time with, that's your right. That's correct. Dude, why are you subjecting your wife to a statistically higher likelihood of being raped domestically by marrying her? What the fuck? I, because I actually protect her from men. That's my whole job. Oh, shit, of- dude. Damn, that white knight shit coming in strong. You protect her from other I'm men. My, my, Do you, I'm like, a- walk in front of her when you're all walking down the sidewalk so the other gentle sir's gaze d- do not touch her gentle flesh? She asked me to protect her, bro. Damn. Damn, you're very chivalrous of you. Uh, truly respecting the knight's code. Not a knight, bro. When you are married to someone rest of the people that those like, are identical just because they go by the pronouns that he him they literally say like he him les- lesbians still say they identify as women sure i identify They're as a man using... i'll just go by she her lesbian yeah <sighs> wow You're well, getting, oh, like, do you not really have a counter argument reactionary on this do you not have a counter argument to that in both yeah, it's cases, absolutely not the same thing. Like you're not a fucking female. Being... You don't identify as a female. You're throwing out this so, wait, like vague yeah, fucking. They're, uh, and they're butch lesbians, and they're going by he/him. They don't identify as a man, but they're going as he/him. I identify as a man. I'm going by she/her. These are identical. In both cases, heteronormativity is being bucked. You're only supporting one right, of them because you've been to told to support one of them. She/her gay. You've been... If you wanted to go by she/her gay to fucking buck, then go ahead. But then, like you just trying to like say you're a lesbian to get in there is you've be, been like, told cringe. which one to be in support of and which one is reactionary. They're identical ideologically. I literally just said if you wanted to go by she, her, gay, that would be identical fucking binary, right? That that would be the identical fucking juxtaposition. To so this. if there not were he, him, lesbians that wanted to call her themselves lesbian, you. If there that's were he, not him, the fucking juxtaposition. If there to were he, the him, lesbians system. calling themselves gay, would you call them reactionary? Probably. Really? <laughs> I guess I'd, I'd I'd have to actually see that fucking happen and be able to assess it. What you're trying to do right now is just like create this like hyperbolic what if to like fucking completely destroy the idea no, I'm po- instead of I'm like pointing fucking out, I'm pointing understanding out that, that this has existed way before you oh, I'm pointing and it's out, not an idea that needs he, to be fought I'm pointing out that you're an ideologue that you don't care about the underlying ideology you've just been told which has historical precedent and which is woke and which is problematic who told and me? that you're assigning I don't, me. you know, I'm going to be honest, I don't know who told you, Izzy, but your vitriolic right, reaction to something like that is ideologically like, identical to what you suggested when you would be fine with the no, human No, you using thing. she, her, lesbian would not be uh, the exact How? opposite to it. It wouldn't. You using she, her, gay would be. How? Okay, so you have a problem with the lesbians using he, him, gay with one another? I don't understand what the distinction is between these groups, except one is precedent and one doesn't. I feel like you're just hyper trying to police how people fucking identify right now on the um, wait, how semantics am I trying to police? Wait, language. you're the one saying I'm a reactionary for identifying as a she her reaction uh, lesbian. No, you're literally only doing that to get the reactionary. So no, that you I'm can pointing out that they're identical shit. and you don't have a counter argument. You're just saying one is reactionary and one isn't. I literally but you don't have any said that, that, that like saying you're a she her lesbian isn't identical and you're not responding to that at all. How is it different? Is heteronormativity not being bucked? If you wanted to, if you wanted to take the exact identical argument with you being assigned male at birth, it would be you being she, uh, she, her gay. Would it or would it not? Uh, yeah. What difference does it make whether I identify as she, her gay or she, her lesbian in regards to fighting heteronormativity? You, you don't know. And I don't know because this is just meaningless semantics to play with the definition of existing words in a bland, blith, useless attempt to fight heteronormativity. There's a reason why this ideological trend hasn't continued to today. This is a meaningless argument. And, and my original argument in the clip that was clipped out of context was me saying that words and identity are complicated. We shouldn't fuss about them too much. That, that part I'll agree with you on. We really shouldn't be fu- It's an issue. So the idea that to a person undergoing a mental health crisis, a cop is a more welcome sight than a social worker, 
is to me something I'd like to see borne out in data. If you could, find I don't it. know if we can find data on that, but I'm just going to tell you. Okay, I understand. Can you find that data on people's fear of social workers versus I can't, I can't, I can't find you data on cops? how many people prefer a social, how many people <laughs> in a mental health crisis prefer a social worker than a cop. Here's what I will what say. What about fear of speaking. either group? Is here's there data say, on how broadly, many people here's, fear here's, social workers? I can give you all I can provide are my anecdotes. Okay. Oh, here's okay. what I can say broadly speaking. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I at least I have. Have some. you been? Have you had cops and social workers check up on you in a well? Yes, I've had CPS show up to my house before. I've had police officers show up to my house for domestic violence disputes no um, i said mental health check i did not say interaction for a mental health check oftentimes mental right. health Hold on, wait, checks. i just want to address i just want to just one thing real quick okay people seem i know that like when we talk about socialism and left-leaning government stuff online we have these really great views of social workers and the state it's okay really to a, a lot of people view. It's especially a people that have it's absolutely not when you are a person that has had negative run-ins with the state the state can be incredibly fucking terrifying to you mean deal the police with. when you got what was the negative child interaction they had Hold on. When you've got child what negative interaction sir, did they have with the state? I can't. I, not, I, can't, I have to finish the sentence. Okay? Is it the police? If you've been somebody that's had run-ins, it? it could be the police. It could be social workers. It's it could probably be child the police, protective services. It could be people related to tax collector. There are all sorts of agents of the state where you might have CPS. a really friendly, fuzzy view of them. But if somebody's had negative yes. run-ins with the state, these can be the most terrifying people that you ever deal with in your life. Yeah, a I lot agree. of the times the mental are... health check also ha involves sometimes, right, the neglect of um, uh, of family members or the, nice. uh, you know, the um, aggression towards other people, right? Uh, like every mental health case is going to be different. So, yeah, so. any any case of anything is going to be different. Um, I think that if we, I think that while there isn't going to be specific data on the fear people have of cops versus social workers, I think it's reasonable to say, given the fact that we do know many Americans distrust the police, or at the very least are anxious around them, that's very common, that a mental health crisis is a time where those fears could be elevated, and you would be more likely to be amicable towards a guy in a polo shirt with like an ID badge than somebody in what cops wear, which is some combo of military and police gear. Um, additionally, I think the reason when why you feel have, that is because you don't understand what those social you need to, workers you need represent. To less, okay. Oh, so you talk the, for like twenty uh, minutes of your talk. I just keep cutting you off. You cut me off. You interrupted the panel, man. I'm just compensating for that. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. Let me, let me, let me finish. It's fine. So oh, man. most people's talking. negative experiences with the state are going to be with cops, not social workers. So if you're talking about pre-existing biases against the state, I don't think there are people out there like, yeah, man, I had a bad run up with the state. Those social workers fuck you up. It's, probably, it's usually Start cops. Off. Can you CPS. please unmute me? And keep CPS. in mind, CPS. it can be Can your you probation officer. Like, the thing and is, you just don't mind. know anybody that's had negative runs of the like, state. You don't, you, don't, mind. you don't understand what that experience and is keep like. In mind, but, and so you, you say, you're talking so close to it. Like, only oh, the only people that are truly scared of the state are like mm -hmm. poor black people that get murdered by cops. Like, that's your only experience because on I, Twitter, that's the only connection you have. You are to people projecting that have runs very the state. hard right now. Would you like to argue with Twitter? I'm going with exactly what you're saying. Is Twitter on this panel? Is he in the room with you? Who are you talking to right now? Who are you talking to say, Wait, who are you talking for you to, to come out and Where's say Twitter? the only negative interactions you truly would say generally they're with police there are tons of negative social interactions that you can have with that with the state that aren't police now for and wealthy generally or it's people, the police generally it's not it can generally be but it could be police, others yeah. as well logical essentialist you are because biological essentialism means you have this line and that's stupid. if you believe no. a person with a penis can't be a woman and you believe a person with a vagina can't be a man then biology is essentially and essential to what you believe a person's gender is how can uh, you possibly yeah. make the argument that I lack explanatory utility with regards to my understanding of gender when you come here and th these are this is in how do I attack this? You're a gender or you're a sexual gender essentialist, but you want gender abolitionism. You think it's okay to oppress millions of people and defy the prescriptions of the medical community because you believe that it gives better explanatory value to experiences. But then I ask you to explain how it does, and you can't. The one example you've given, the incongruity between a man who just presents as a woman and a man who identifies a woman, so a woman, properly, you, you gave that and I answered it. So you don't have a difference in explanation possible, but you with your gender critical theory, actually bowled over and sanded down an existing facet of nuance, which is that a man presenting as a woman and a man who identifies as a woman or a trans woman experience their oppression in different ways internally, which is essential to understanding the multiplicity of the patriarchy. When women are affected by the patriarchy, it's not just how they're treated. A man and a woman both being slut-shamed is not the same, not just because mm. of their biology, but because of how they perceive it. I can understand that because my theory has a greater explanatory value than yours. 
I, I never ever said that um, somebody who has gender dysphoria is not going to experience, uh, you know, being attacked or being gender non-conforming differently to somebody who does not have gender uh, dysphoria. I think there's no reason why gender critical feminism can't explain that. I think, and I would say again, that gender critical feminism explains better the fact that uh, somebody having gender dysphoria who is attacked for presenting as a, as a well, a woman, assuming they're a man, obviously, um, that, um, or sorry, assuming, you know, like that, assuming that they are male assigned at birth, uh, somebody with gender dysphoria presenting as a woman is going to experience something much more similar to a man, a genuine man who also presents as a woman, than they are to somebody who is a uh, male assigned at birth, considers themselves a woman, but does nothing in any way to express as a woman. We that person's, about, the, the, the oppression that that person, I, there was nothing that you didn't understand. Have yeah, I'm not saying the thing is you seem to think it's all about can you understand something? No, you particularly... think that. I think social constructs are about utility, and so does everybody else. I've never even <laughs> argued with a turf who made the arguments that you've made before. They make the arguments that the world is a better place if you don't treat trans women as women. You backed off that. You wouldn't even defend that argument. You're just defending this 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 esoteric concept that there's an explanatory difference, which is, yeah, in addition to being wrong, that... deeply dishonest, because we both know you don't care about explanatory value. You care what about we... your intuitive belief that trans women aren't women, and you... Well, I can't go. I can't extrapolate your views any it, point it, beyond that. Well, but. intuition is, I think, a, a fantastic benefit that gender critical theory does have. I think that, <laughs> that is. Hey, 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 hey! Wait, wait, wait! That is the yeah. perfect way to end this conversation. Okay, I agree. Cool. Intuition is on your side. Thank you. All right. Do you want to shout out your channel? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. It's um. <laughs> All right. Oh. <laughs>